Imagine a world where the largest giants reign, where each step makes the earth tremble. Today, let's dive into the era of dinosaurs and meet the undisputed king of this prehistoric realm, Tyrannosaurus Rex. It wasn't just one of the largest carnivores to ever exist, but also the heaviest theropod ever discovered. What made this dinosaur a true predator machine? Let's find out together. Get ready to explore how T-Rex dominated its environment with brute force, cunning intelligence, and a bone-crushing bite. Hold on tight because this journey promises to be as epic as T-Rex itself. Tyrannosaurus, Greek for tyrant lizard, is an extinct genus of Tyrannosaurid theropod dinosaur that lived during the Maastrichtian age of the late Cretaceous period, approximately 72 to 66 million years ago. The type species is T. rex, Greek for tyrant lizard king, named in 1905. Since its discovery, Tyrannosaurus has become one of the most well-known and popular dinosaurs, not only among Tyrannosaurids, but among all non-avian dinosaurs. More than 50 individuals of this taxon have been found. A recent, albeit controversial, study suggests the existence of three distinct species of Tyrannosaurus, proposing two new species, Tyrannosaurus imperator and Tyrannosaurus regina. However, most paleontologists consider these new species invalid, as the differences can be explained by individual variation or sexual dimorphism. In 1900, Barnum Brown and his team discovered the first partial skeleton of T. rex during an expedition in Montana, and in 1902, they uncovered a second skeleton that would become the neotype specimen. In 1905, Henry Fairfield Osborne officially named the skeleton Tyrannosaurus rex, a name that persists to this day. Since then, many other individuals of T. rex have been discovered including some nearly complete specimens that show various stages of development, skin impressions, and even soft tissue. The discovery of Dynamosaurus imperiosus by Brown in 1902 was also synonymous with Tyrannosaurus rex, as the holotype of Dynamosaurus was found with osteoderms belonging to Ankylosaurus, with which T. rex coexisted in late Cretaceous North America. Tarbosaurus was also classified as a second Asian species of Tyrannosaurus. But despite the similarities, it has distinct characteristics enough to be considered its own species, Tarbosaurus batar. In 2024, a new species, Tyrannosaurus macrainsis, was described based on fossils found in the Hall Lake Formation, early Campanian Maastrichtian in New Mexico. These fossils are between 6 and 7 million years older than those attributed to T. rex. The two species are similar in size, differing mainly in skull characteristics. The most complete specimen, nicknamed Sue, is on display at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago and is about 90% complete. Sue measures approximately 12.3 meters in length, about 3.9 meters tall at the hips, and weighs an average of 10 tons, making it one of the largest terrestrial carnivores and theropods that ever existed. Other specimens are considered larger than Sue, although this information is debated. The largest known specimen named Scotty measures about 12.4 meters in length, stands 3.9 meters tall at the hips, and weighs between 10 to 11 tons, although most adults averaged between 7 to 9 tons and measured between 11 to 12 meters in length. Despite its colossal proportions, theropods like Spinosaurus and Giganotosaurus may have potentially been longer than T. rex. Sue and Scotty are believed to be some of the oldest of their species, around 28 years old. The average lifespan of T. rex is estimated to be about 25 years. The T. rex skull could grow over 1.5 meters in length and was extremely robust. The base was significantly wider than the snout, providing excellent binocular and stereoscopic vision, even greater than that of a human, as studies suggest. Its mouth was wide compared to most other theropods and had a U-shaped form, increasing the surface area it could bite at once. The skull had several openings, known as fenestri, which reduced head weight and likely housed soft tissues like muscles or blood vessels. The fenestra on top of the head may have served as a cooling mechanism, similar to that seen in crocodiles. In addition, T. rex's jaws were about 1.2 meters long and highly muscular, providing a devastating bite force. Analyses have shown that Tyrannosaurus could open its jaws to approximately 63 to 80 degrees. 
the neck of T-Rex formed a natural S-shaped curve, similar to other theropods, but was relatively short and extremely robust to support its massive head. The forelimbs of Tyrannosaurus, often ridiculed, were the size of an adult human's arms but were anchored by powerful muscles. Each T-Rex arm could lift 400 pounds and, unlike dinosaurs like Carnotaurus, were not vestigial and would have had some utility, although the exact purpose is not fully known. Unlike more basal theropods, T-Rex's hands had only two functional fingers with sharp claws, while the third finger was underdeveloped and too small to protrude through the skin. In contrast to the forelimbs, the hind limbs were proportionally long and extremely muscular to support the massive bulk of the animal. Its feet resembled those of terrestrial birds, with three long toes that touched the ground and a vestigial hallux, dewclaw, that never touched the ground. Each toe had massive hoof-like claws on the tips. The tail of T. rex was long and heavy, occasionally containing more than 40 vertebrae, helping to balance the large head and trunk. To compensate for its immense size, many bones in the skeleton were hollow, reducing weight without compromising strength. T. rex's trunk was wide and deep, resembling a barrel chest, supporting most of the animal's internal organs, aided by belly ribs, gastralia. As a Cerisian dinosaur, the pubis in T. rex's hips pointed forward and away from the backward-facing ischium. T. rex's teeth exhibited some heterodonty, differences in shape. The teeth in the premaxilla, front upper jaw, were relatively small and compact, D-shaped in cross-section, had reinforcing ridges on the back surface, were incisiform, blade-like tips, and curved backward, reducing the risk of breakage when biting and pulling. The other teeth were robust, with a more blunt shape compared to the dagger-like teeth of basal theropods, more widely spaced, and also had reinforced roots. The teeth in the middle of the maxilla were the largest in the jaws. The largest T-Rex tooth discovered so far measures 30.5 centimeters, 12 inches, in length, including the root, making it the largest tooth of any carnivorous dinosaur and one of the largest in the animal kingdom, excluding tusks. The first discovered tyrannosauroids were relatively small and feathered. They were not the top predators of their time, overshadowed by much larger allosauroids. Proceratosaurus, the oldest of this family, lived in Europe during the Jurassic period, about 167 million years ago. Over time and with the extinction of carnosaurs, tyrannosauroids became the top predators in their environments, evolving to larger sizes as they moved westward to Asia and eventually to North America. Eutyrannus is perhaps the most famous of these basal tyrannosauroids, known for being the largest confirmed feathered animal. This raised the hypothesis that Tyrannosaurus and its close relatives could have had feathers as well. However, skin impressions show that Tyrannosaurus was primarily, if not entirely, scaly. Charles W. Gilmore discovered a small Tyrannosaurus skull in the Hell Creek Formation, initially classifying it as a Gorgosaurus species. However, after further analysis, the skull was considered too distinct to be a Gorgosaurus species and was renamed Nanotyrannus lancensis. As the specimen showed signs of immaturity, it was suggested that it could be a young Tyrannosaurus rex, the only other known Tyrannosaurus from Hell Creek. This hypothesis gained traction with the discovery of Jane, a six-meter T-Rex from Montana, whose skull showed similar characteristics to the Nanotyrannus holotype. It's unlikely that T-Rex lived more than 30 years, suggesting they had fast and tough lives. For a long time, the exact skin appearance of Tyrannosaurus was unknown. The classic representation was of lizard-like scales covering the entire body, as was thought for all dinosaurs at the time. However, over time and with the discovery of more feathered dinosaur fossils, the question arose whether all dinosaurs could have had feathers in some form, including Tyrannosaurus rex. This became more plausible with the discovery of Eutyrannus, a relatively large relative of T. rex, covered in feathers. This led many artists to challenge previous depictions of the tyrant lizard, covering it from head to toe in fluffy feathers. However, a 2017 study showed that skin impressions from several derived tyrannosaurs, including T. rex itself, did not show fluffy feathers but rather small reticulated scales. While skin impressions were scattered among various species, 
researchers concluded that there were enough scale impressions in different parts of the bodies to suggest scales covered the entire animal rather than feathers in unpreserved areas. This was explained as an adaptation to the large size of the animal, as any extra integument would be detrimental rather than beneficial, especially in a warm environment. Contrary to classical depictions, paleontologists now know that T. rex and other theropods kept their bodies more horizontal, using the tail and head for balance. For a long time, Tyrannosaurus rex was believed to be a hyper-carnivore, the top predator of Hell Creek. It certainly had the size and teeth to fill that role. However, in the 1990s, renowned paleontologist Jack Horner proposed that T. rex was a clumsy scavenger that scavenged the land for carcasses or intimidated smaller predators to steal their prey, rather than hunting on its own, as was the traditional view. Horner based these claims on observations of the animal's anatomy, such as the tiny arms, which he claimed were useless for taking down large animals. It's huge size that would hinder it from chasing prey. It's extremely strong sense of smell comparable to vultures known for scavenging. It's bone crushing bite similar to hyenas and that its eyes would be too small for effective hunting. Horner also noted that a triceratops specimen showed many bite marks on the pelvis, suggesting T. rex fed on carcasses. This hypothesis was immediately contested. Paleontology and Tyrannosaurus experts like Philip J. Curry Thomas Holtz, Thomas Carr, and Robert T. Backer refuted Horner's claims, pointing out that he misinterpreted several features of T. rex and the analogs he used. The small forearms of Tyrannosaurus would not be needed to kill prey, as its huge jaws were more than sufficient to take down large animals. Additionally, not all predators kill with the help of their arms, such as crocodiles and birds of prey. The comparison to hyenas was also inadequate as hyenas use their bone-crushing bite both for hunting and scavenging. Although Tyrannosaurus was very large, it would still be capable of moving fast enough to keep up with slower prey like Triceratops. This was possibly due to its unique arctometatarsus arrangement, where the upper part of the middle ankle bone was squeezed between the other two, allowing greater agility and speed. Recent estimates suggest that T-Rex could move from 20 to 34 kilometers per hour. However, due to its enormous size, Researchers in biomechanics noted that Tyrannosaurus would not be able to run. New simulations based on tail movement showed that T. rex was not even a fast walker. Its preferred walking speed was less than 5 km per hour, about half of previous estimates. To put it in context, this is the average walking speed of a human. Although T. rex had an incredible sense of smell, this did not necessarily indicate it was a scavenger as many modern predators like wolves and bears also have excellent senses of smell. The powerful bite, compared to hyenas, was also misunderstood, as hyenas hunt their food more often than scavenge. As for the eyes, scans of T. rex's skull revealed that a significant portion of its brain case was dedicated to vision. Combined with its excellent binocular vision, this would have allowed T. rex to locate prey at long distances, being very useful for hunting. Furthermore, it was impractical for the area's only large carnivore not to hunt the ecosystem's huge herbivores, maintaining a healthy population. Horner's colleagues pointed out that the next largest carnivores in Hell Creek would not be able to take down several ton prey alone. A fossil of Edmontosaurus was found with a healed bite on one of its tail vertebrae, indicating it had escaped an attack and survived long enough for the wound to heal and the only animal capable of giving such a bite was Tyrannosaurus rex. Some paleontologists suggested that Tyrannosaurus rex could live in family groups, where an adult couple would care for the young until they were ready to form their own families. The basis for this theory comes from findings related to Albertosaurus, a close relative of T. rex, which was found in large groups of individuals of varying ages. If true, smaller and faster young could have acted as chasers, driving weaker individuals from their herds and leading them to slower but stronger adults who would finish the hunt with a quick and powerful bite in a vital area. Extinct dinosaurs are part of a larger group called archosaurs, which includes social animals like modern birds, alligators, and crocodiles. In the 2000s, the hypothesis arose that Tyrannosaurus, due to its serrated teeth like those of the Komodo dragon, could have a septic bite that would infect escaping victims. However, this theory was refuted as it was found that Komodo dragons do not kill their prey with bacteria, 
but with venom. Additionally, T-Rex's serrated teeth were not capable of retaining small pieces of flesh, which would likely result in infections in the T-Rex's own mouth. If T-Rex relied on a septic bite, there would be no need to develop such large and powerful jaws. Sexual dimorphism is notoriously difficult to distinguish in the fossil record. For a while, it was believed that female tyrannosaurs were larger than males, but recent analyses suggest there is no reliable evidence for this assumption. Only one specimen of Tyrannosaurus, known as B. rex, showed signs of sexual dimorphism, being found with traces of medullary bone tissue similar to that found in modern birds during ovulation. In 2021, a study led by Charles Marshall attempted to estimate the survival rate of Tyrannosaurus hatchlings to adulthood and calculate the total number of individuals that could have existed. It was concluded that about 2.5 billion adult Tyrannosaurs could have existed, but only about 20,000 could be sustained at once. It was estimated that for every Tyrannosaurus fossilized, 80,000 others were not preserved. In 2021, it was confirmed that Tyrannosaurus possessed a complex network of sensory organs in its snout, allowing it to recognize different areas, materials, and movements with great precision. This would have helped T. rex to eat efficiently and care for its offspring. A recent analysis suggested the existence of several differentiated species of Tyrannosaurus, based on a data set of over 30 specimens showing notable variations in body proportions. However, this hypothesis is controversial, and many experts believe these variations can be explained as individual variations within the species T. rex. The maximum size of Tyrannosaurus rex is a highly debated topic among paleontologists. Besides Sue and Scotty, many of the largest T. rexes are known only from fragments, which complicates precise size estimation. Two specimens that may be larger than Sue and Scotty are E.D. Cope and Bertha. These specimens are fragmentary but show dimensions larger than the other two. Known as E.D. Cope, it was discovered in 1999 by Bucky Durflinger in Perkins County, South Dakota, in the Hell Creek Formation from the late Cretaceous period. About 10% of the skeleton was recovered, including part of the jaw, teeth, fragmented vertebrae, ribs, femur, tibia, and fibula. Paul et al. reported a minimum femoral circumference of 630 millimeters for the right femur, resulting in an estimated body mass of 10,626 kilograms. Cope's length was estimated at approximately 12.5 meters, with a hip height of 3.70 to 3.87 meters, and it could weigh 12.4 tons. Bertha is even larger than Cope, weighing between 12 and 13 tons and measuring between 13 and 13.5 meters in length. Complete bones of femur, tibia, and fibula were found, which is highly reliable for estimating body size. However, Tyrannosaurus Bertha has not been formally described. If Bertha's femur circumference is significantly different from Sue and Scotty's, it is reasonable to say Bertha is larger. These findings expand our understanding of the size and anatomy of Tyrannosaurus rex, showing diversity within the species. And thus, we conclude our journey through the fascinating world of the largest Tyrannosaurus rex ever discovered. Each new fossil found not only helps us better understand their dimensions and physical characteristics, but also to imagine what life was like in the late Cretaceous period. Paleontology is a constantly evolving science, and the discoveries we make today shed light on mysteries that have intrigued scientists and enthusiasts for decades. So, next time you think of T-Rex, remember, these giants still have much to teach us. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next adventures through the prehistoric past. Leave a comment letting us know which dinosaur you'd like to see in our next videos. Until next time.